I am completely happy with that. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is the stand that my lathe sits on and those down there are casters. And I'm here to tell you that casters on a stand for a lathe, bad idea. But space is a premium in my shop and I have had no choice but to have my stand on casters. It's been this way for probably 10 years and while there is some vibration introduced it's served me well but there's got to be a better way so i can't take credit for this brilliant idea i'm a member of the mill lathe combo facebook page and one of the guys there posted a picture of how he used a jack to modify the stand that his combo machine sits on to be able to raise and lower it and basically activate and deactivate casters. And as soon as I saw that picture, I thought, that's brilliant. There was no way to make his specific design work for my application because my stand is so different. But all I needed was the idea. Once I had the idea, it was easy to modify it and fine tune it to fit my application. So the first thing that I need to do is jack this up, block it up, and remove the wheels that are currently on there so that I can begin retrofitting this for the caster system that can be raised and lowered. Blocking it up is extremely important. You don't ever want to have something heavy resting totally on the jack. And now we can remove the casters. <clears throat> And just like that, we can begin installing the parts that I fabricated. So this is my slider that the wheels attach to. And I built it first so that I could use it to correctly orientate the holes for both the upper piece of angle iron and the lower piece of angle iron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this in this lower piece of angle iron. And then I'm going to use a center punch to punch it. Now this is a 5 8 inch opening and all I have is a half inch center punch. So I actually put some bushings in this piece that I fabricated so as to help guide it. I have a mark right there showing the halfway point and there is a mark on this piece that I fabricated. Now what's nice about this project is it's a fabrication project. It doesn't have to be machinist accurate. It just needs to be close enough. There is some adjustment that I can do as I'm putting it all together. And so if it's a little bit off this way or a little bit off that way, it really doesn't matter as long as everything is straight and square and that the holes line up. The Getting this hole perfect down here with this hole and this hole perfect down here with that hole as well as lining up with the top holes. Now that has to be dead on, otherwise things won't slide properly. But other than that, you can have a little room for error. To space this, I'm actually gonna just use some material that I have that works out to be the right thickness. I did the same thing with the upper piece of angle iron and I used a one inch spacer. Of course, the upper piece of angle iron is 3 16 because that's what I had. And this lower piece of angle iron 
is three eighths. So that actually changes how it fits. All right, so we get it lined up and get it in place. But ultimately I wanted exactly the same distance from there to the center of this hole. And this spacing accomplishes that. Still roughly centered. All right, now that I have that center punched, I'm going to remove the piece that the wheels are gonna fasten to and drill out these holes. So you can tell by the holes, this bracket has had many lives. It's served as other things before it was here to hold the casters. Cutting steel, I love step drill bits. Switched out to a bigger step drill bit and I've actually marked it with Sharpie so that I know where to stop because this bit is actually bigger than the hole that I am trying to drill. If this was not welded to this, I would simply unbolt it and use the step drill bit from the other side to get it the rest of the way through. Sadly, that's not an option, so I will have to use a 5 8 drill bit. The bigger the drill bit, the slower the drill needs to go, so I'm going to turn the speed way down on my drill. Sadly, with this drill, that's also going to reduce torque. like it fits as well. The hardest part is now done. All right, the next step is going to be welding a nut to the top of this. I'm going to take and clean that up. I'm actually going to set it up the way it's going to be when it's installed, because in doing so, it'll make sure that everything is positioned correctly and so that I'm not introducing any error. You can see there's a little flex there, a little play, which is fine. But again, that's why I am setting all this up in the way that it'll be when it is functioning before welding these nuts in place. You might notice there's a little one right there. And on this top piece, there is a one. The one on the other side is, is numbered two. And that was done for two reasons. One was to make sure that this matches this because these holes were just like these holes were based off of this. And that allowed me to compensate for any error. So like if this is slightly that way or slightly this way, it makes everything the same. And it keeps this side autonomous from parts from that side. I put this at halfway in between this and this for the simple reason that I want, I know that these holes match this and I know these holes match this. So putting it halfway in between should line things up relatively well as I tighten stuff down. So we're dealing with a couple of things here. This. Acme all thread had some some rough spots in it and some barbs the inside of this uh, bushing is not exactly perfect but it did loosen up on the other side and that's actually pretty good I apologize I'm gonna have to turn on a fan for when I'm welding safety first Good a time as any to attach the wheels. 
as happens so often in retrofit projects like this, I had to make a compromise in the design. I made this significantly wider than the original post. And if you look here, this wheel, if I were to drop it down right now, would actually hit the piece of angle iron. So that's something I'm going to have to be mindful of when I'm raising and lowering it. I could take and, and cut out a section of the angle iron, but I, I think I'm just going to live with it. I also could have extended these pieces, but the longer you make this, the more prone it is to bending. This is just some thin walled tubing that I got from actually taking apart a treadmill. And I did not want to overextend. Another thing that I wanted to point out when I made this, I welded a cap on the end and this is welded on both sides. So as to help support in multiple places throughout that tube and give it vertical rigidity. Ultimately, I was just trying to use what I had on hand. Didn't want to have to be buying anything else, uh, any extra steel, that kind of thing. And so that was a huge factor in my decision making. Obviously, these are heavy duty casters. Now, part of the reason that I used Acme All Thread is because I had some left over from my adjustable column mill build. And two, I wanted to have. A safety lock. So these nuts serve to lock this in place and just like that the wheels would be locked down. Obviously I need to put the top piece on. We basically have all this installed. I still need to drill holes through there and bolt this to this. All right, this jack is just an inexpensive little two-ton jack. I bought this from Amazon. Uh, I think it cost me less than 20 bucks. It'll be linked in the description in case you're interested in getting one. All right, that fits right there. I'm gonna clamp this in and give it a test before I drill the holes to mount this upper piece. I like redundancy when I build things. That's part of why I welded that nut at the bottom so that some of the force is being held with the feet and then this being bolted at the top, the force coming through the Acme all thread. To lower this down, all I have to do is raise my nuts on the Acme thread. The weight back on the caster. And then we're going to let it down slowly. The jack is holding it. I could tighten the nuts down, get it in a locked position, and be able to move it around. But what I really want to do is set it down on the ground. We're set. The lathe is firmly down to the concrete. We're no longer on the casters. I've confirmed that this top mounting location works, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill those holes and get it mounted in place. Let's get it back up so I can get it into a safe working situation. So the last thing I need to do to finish this project up is find a way to secure the jack to the assembly. I thought about welding a little pocket up underneath here for the piston to fit into. And I even thought about building a little platform with a lip all the way around it for the bottom to fit in. Then it occurred to me, this jack has a screw top. And all I have to do is remove said screw top, drill a hole in the top of this, and I can screw it down. And that's exactly what I decided to do. Now, when I get to the full extension on this, it grabs to where you can't go any further. This piston is hollow, but it is solid on the bottom. Otherwise, you'd have hydraulic fluid leaking out of it. So all a person has to do is cut off 
the extension, cut a groove into this bottom piece, use a screwdriver to screw it back down in, and now we have a stud that we can attach to the top. Obviously, if I was using this to lift a vehicle or anything even remotely close to the two tons that this is designed for, I would never in a million years consider modifying that. That would just be a recipe for disaster. But for this application, where we're only dealing with a few hundred pounds, this is going to be an outstanding way to get everything connected and not having to add extra parts and pieces to the process. So I drilled my hole, turned out to be 9 sixteenths. I grooved the end of the extension after cutting it off. It's about 3 eighths worth of material there. So we're just going to put a screwdriver in it. Screw it down to the point where it drops into the piston. We can bolt this into place. And there's my extension that is now my bolt. Use a pair of vice grips. We will have that secured. If I find that loosens up over time, I might use a lock washer or some Loctite. That's all to be determined. We are set to go. At some point, I will blow this apart for paint, at which point I'll round off corners and things like that, kind of dress it, clean it up a little bit. But for right now, it's functional, and I'm going to use it as is. All right, to lower it, all I have to do is loosen my retaining nuts. One nice thing about using those retaining nuts is if for some reason this quits working, I can actually crank it up and down with those nuts. Probably be a pain in the butt and it's not something that I'd really want to do. Thinking about that, I realized I probably also could have made this electric, done something that didn't have a hydraulic jack but instead used a treadmill incline motor and spun the Acme all thread to raise it up and down. Same exact concept that I had for my adjustable column mill, and that would have worked great here as well. But I don't move this that often. The three times that I typically move this is, one, if I've dropped something behind it that I've got to get to. Two, if I need access to the end of the spindle because I have something really long that I'm turning. And where it sits in my shop currently, there's only about 18 inches between the spindle bore and the wall. So if I need to run something long down the throat of the spindle, I've got to pull it out so that I can put the piece in. I had to do that when I was making the new lead screw for this machine. And the third reason that I occasionally have to get to the back of the machine is if I'm having to do something with the electrical. My power supply is on the back side and of course the motor is on the back side any of that kind of stuff if I needed to mess with that then I would have to go to the back I am completely happy with that if you like what you've seen please click like if you'd like to see more please subscribe thanks for watching